-hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we had lots of issues with providers, mm -hmm. um, and then we had a lot more placements outside of our counties. Mm -hmm. And when we have that, it's harder to get parents engaged when they're not having as much mm -hmm. interaction with their children. So I would ask you to look at that. And then there's a fourth piece where we've had issues with getting managed care and then we change over to Maribel and getting them to pay for services for children's behavior. So I would look at mm -hmm. all of those things to see if those impact why those children mm -hmm. aren't going home. Okay. Um, Good point. In the interest of time, and mm -hmm. I didn't see the meeting this meeting, but because I want to make sure that um, we are able to get you guys out when we said, we're going to move it along. So if you have recommendations based off the information that you're hearing, please write that down. If you have a question that's clarification mm -hmm. about the information being presented, please ask that question so that we make sure that you're getting the information in the correct way. But if it's about ideas you have about the work going forward, <laughs> hold that, mm -hmm. write it down so we've got it. But mm -hmm. let um, Dr. Bill keep moving to the slides. Okay. And, and this chart, uh, Children in Foster Care by Region, uh, shows, and I'm going to come back to the one on the two outcomes, shows by region how many children are in care and what the changes were between uh, April of last year and April of this year. And I highlighted those regions that had uh, substantial uh, changes highlighted in yellow. And we had one region, 10, which is the South Georgia, Doherty County area, that we did see a decrease. Uh, so we're able to break our data down this way. This is a chart that we find very useful to this map. Uh, and we will be updating this one soon. When we ask the question about where uh, are the rates of in care highest in the state. So from this map of the counties, you can see that north west quadrant up there has the greatest number of children in care. And this is a rate per 1,000 children under the age of 17 in that particular county. The children in foster care, 17 and under in foster care. So you see that area there. And we've done quite a bit of work there. Uh, and we have a collaborative with Alabama. Because when we met with some individuals from Alabama, we found out that the, what would that be, their northeast counties are also high. And we know our families are going back and forth across the border. Uh, so my two regional directors here, Ross Collins um, and James Benneker's area. But yeah, so that's where the greatest amount of activities, the darker the chart or the darker the county, the more um, we have coming into care. Uh, and this chart, uh, Melissa had mentioned this one in terms of what we looked like over the past years. But I wanted you all to know that uh, when it comes to recurrence of substantiated maltreatment, again, as she said, this is whether or not a child was re-victimized uh, within six months. For this one, uh, the child had to have a substantiated abuse, and then within six months, what was the pattern? So we are doing a three-month period uh, averaging out because we want to account for some monthly kind of changes. But this kind of information tells us in what areas might we be seeing a problem. Uh, so we are able to look at this by region each month to see. Right, on the bottom would be the regional numbers because, for instance, you see at the top one, repeat maltreatment. Those that are in yellow are below our state average for that period. For that period, our state average, 3% repeat maltreatment. And that uh, dark gold line across there is the national standard, which is 5.4%. So the uh, ones in yellow are showing you the ones that was below, at or below the state rate by regions. And so the other ones are the ones that was above the state. Then that gold line, you see the two regions, regions two and nine. Region two is at Northeast Georgia, Hall County, I think being the largest county there. Region nine, South Georgia. Stacy, what is the largest county then? That's where, way across Georgia. Um, Lawrence 
is in that area. So those two are above that. So we like to look at it in a, well, we've shared this in terms of monthly, but we want to look at it in, in terms of averages too. We can drill down with those regions to determine what happened. We know exactly who the children are, so I can go back to find out what happened in this case. Uh, same thing with the bottom one, foster care reentry. Uh, the number of children, what percent of kids came back into care within 12 months of leaving? is the foster care reentry. See, for those months, uh, we were at right at about 5.5% statewide. Um, the um, national standard for this one is 8.1%. And so you can see in yellow those that were below the state average. So with this data, we can go back and look at exactly who these children were, what services that they have when they were here a year ago, why did they come into care, why did they go home, so we can really drill down to determine what happened. So if a child is reviewed mm -hmm. within that six-month period, is there either a state or federal mandate about the child being reviewed every six months? No. There's nothing that says they have to. So is there any number of uh, times of abuse that trigger removal? Right, and I think, and, and for Judge Teske and, and Judge Walker, I don't know that from there and that they've looked at this. We, not necessarily, I think as she said, if you're looking at, this was apparent, maybe the first one was that uh, something related to substance abuse, we put the services in the home, then they come back again, now we find out evidently whatever happened didn't work. So it's going to be on an individual basis about what serve, is it the same allegation as the one before? Is the allegation growing in severity? So maybe it was neglect, we substantiated because of neglect the first time, now they come back and now it's abuse and things are getting worse there. So it's really going to be on an individual kind of an assessment basis about what happened in the family. Which is why with the data being able to drill down and really assess what happened here. Uh, gives us some information. Did, was it something we missed the first time, which is what I think Senator Millard mentioned earlier. Did we miss something the first time and now we're catching it, or is something new popping up? Uh, what we may see sometimes in these is that first time there was no boyfriend at home, maybe the second time now somebody else has moved into the family setting. So that's always important to us when the intake comes back in. We want to know, did the family composition change? Has somebody else moved in? Could be, did somebody lose a job? You know, that maybe, you know, so there's a lot of factors here that we have to look at each one individually to really assess what should happen. Okay, so we have that. I uh, also just wanted to uh, kind of look at the average uh, case managers, ratio of case managers to case loads in this state. So you can see, as the numbers have increased, certainly our workers are carrying more cases than uh, a year, uh, the first one, October 2011. You can see where we were. Uh, and the case loads are, my, are slightly higher. We did not pull out Fulton and DeKalb from this. And as you know, Fulton and DeKalb, because of the Kenny A consent decree, they have mandatory case load sizes that they can't go above. Uh, so theirs is bringing this a bit lower than what some of the actuals are. So some of the regional directors are probably looking, thinking, no, our caseload's a little bit higher than this. But they are in there. Aside from the counties that are affected by the KA, there's no cap on how many caseloads a defect worker can carry with any given amount? There is not a cap. We have recommended and suggested. Um, agencies such as Child Welfare League of America has recommended caseload sizes. You know, uh, you know, for investigations or uh, foster care and all of that. Uh, but again, because of the nature of our work, you know, if a case has to be investigated, if a child comes into care, you know, we are going to have to assign that case. So there's not a particular cap. You know, when we have new staff coming right out of training, we want to keep their case loads as low as possible until they learn the job. Uh, and all of that, but we are, our uh, plan is with the ability to hire these additional staff that we can bring the caseloads down as we do more work around um, uh, recruitment of staff as well as re retaining staff. 
All of those factors will go into whether or not we can keep it at a manageable caseload. Because we can bring more in and they're leaving. Are there national benchmarks that, that, that we would get? That yes. What, well, how we, I mean, I see what you're saying here. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? How do we stack up? Uh -huh. like the at, states that are uh, operating do, do you have that information? Mm -hmm. Like, if we've got similar demographics, like, you know, we use North Carolina for a lot of things we compare with mm -hmm. in the state, education, and other types of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do we rank versus the other states mm -hmm. in this kind of case? That we if we're mm -hmm. looking, and we're going to add all these, whatever the number mm -hmm. is, what is it, 500 case workers, 600 mm -hmm. number is? We're going to add all those. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Are we getting right. where we need to be from mm -hmm. what, the, what the best practices are? Mm -hmm. what we're looking at. I don't, I don't know a place that where that's uh, publicly available by state, like in a routine kind of reporting mm -hmm. way. I do think that we, if we selected a few states that we'd be interested in, mm -hmm. we should require a phone call or two between. Uh -huh. I think that might be right, right, we can do that. that. Mm -hmm. Right, we can do that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry. Okay. The other comment I would make, though, too, about caseloads is, and I, I want to, I just have a question at the end of this. Which is your insight about caseload versus workloads? Mm -hmm. um, and I know we triage, case, we, we have assembly lines where we have workers who are specialized in what they do across the life of that case. But there's also a situation, you know, what the case mix looks like, I think, mm -hmm. makes a difference in terms of the burden on the individual mm -hmm. workers. Right, and, I think, and that's something that we've talked about, drilling down into to find out whether or not there's a difference in the outcomes and even retention of staff based on those kinds of things, because it's going to be different across, you know, the state in terms of what that mix is going to look like. Because as I showed, just think about some of the issues up in North uh, West Georgia. Northwest Georgia is very different from South Georgia. And then when you get to areas such as the region 9 and 11, geographically spread out, but fewer families. So, but there's another level of frustration and burden on the staff in terms of having to drive a couple of hours just to visit a family that's different from within a metro area. But those are all things that we can look at that mix to see what the outcomes are. Right, yes. We're talking about all uh, child welfare case managers, yes. So and we can't break those out separately. Right. Sometimes we look at, you know, how many, the average for a CPS worker versus uh, foster care. Right. Because right. those are pretty different. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And of course, and this one is a changing numbers. This change daily, yes, because we are live, uh, a living, breathing system. <laughs> you know, as I speak now, you know, new investigations are coming in. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe a, a 10 or a longer, you know, trend. Mm -hmm. people just understanding that, because I, I think that it'll help us to understand if if these are um, responses to policy changes and, and why we might be seeing these kind of things being driven. But if, mm -hmm. if you're seeing, and I agree with the, you know, the senator, I think some some trend data actually mm -hmm. would be useful. Honestly, okay. Because you know, this is, I don't think anybody. I think you guys have worked very hard. I understand that. Nobody can have a 40% increase in demand and meet that demand in a, in a short period of time without, mm -hmm. without some challenges. And so, and, and, when, and if, you, if you plotted turnover against this data, I think it would be yes. a very story. Exactly. Because we do have an annual turnover rate of probably 23, 24% a year in child welfare services. So, yeah.